brothers and sisters, what a wonderful opportunity it is for us to post up before the more again to receive a continuation of the orientation for the 2024 masterclass. Remember, the masterclass this year is going around differently from how it has run since 2013, when the first cohort, you know, did the program. And every year since then, we've been thrown in a classroom on Facebook, and the people are admitted to the classroom, and what they learn is exclusive to them, except what we post in different groups. This time, because the classroom model came to a head last year, and it couldn't go further, it was shut down, and the law said, just relax, rest in him. We rested in him, and the Lord showed us something we had spoken about a number of times before, that the master class will now hold from this page, and the page of Pastor Grace. And so by the grace of the Lord, I'm going to teach you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Pastor Grace will teach Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then the evening, we probably will be doing a lot of school and ministry uh, stuff to just develop the process or whatever the Lord may lead us to do. But we want to say, some people wonder, why is it daily teaching? Maybe we're going to outline for you. But let me say this to you. In Mark 3, 13 to 16, Yeshua took people unto himself. They came. And ordained them to go and preach. But then, that war, if you understand it clearly, for three and a half years, they were with him. He taught them daily, demonstrated the kingdom to them, and then released them to go. For all the apostles, there are cases in the New Testament, when he went to the city and spent two years non-stop, daily teaching. And then the people had power to go forth. So there is an established uh, kingdom paradigm that teaching and training is not something you know just not in you know, one week, two weeks, some people love it, vacation, Bible school, and they call themselves minister because they attended two weeks a program. You know, how can we deceive ourselves? We need to understand the kingdom, the principles of the kingdom, the ordinance of the kingdom, the pattern of the kingdom. And for that reason, the Lord has given us an idea that we, the Global School of Ministry Curriculum, could be neatly divided into three. The basic program, the advanced, uh, the intermediate program, and the advanced program. Any of them you complete, you are good to go for ministry. But then don't stop there. You go on to the next level. You go on to the next level. Now the question is, what is different from the master class and the global school of ministry? The global school of ministry is a kingdom operating system. The curriculum, right now we have about 66 courses. Some of them are not fully developed. The manuscripts are not ready to the books, but a lot of them have been developed. Now, out of those 66 courses that are divided into basic, intermediate, and, and advanced programs, you can go to your own on the website. Or a church can take the curriculum and use it to teach and train people right there in the church. An individual can take the curriculum and use it on Facebook, on social media, and train people. On WhatsApp, you can use it and train people. So what do you think about the master class that is different? It is that as the vessel the Lord has used to bring for these revelations and who, for whom he's done a work in us to come to an understanding, we are not yet there, but substantially the Lord has taken us to a place where we can say with something thing that we know that we know that this is the word of the Lord because it's clear in scripture. And the Holy Spirit comes and beats upon it. So when we ask the instruments he used to get this vision, we take some courses from the basic, some from the intermediate, some from the advanced, and then teach it ourselves directly, or those who we have trained already, who are mandated to take and train. Now that's a master plan, because in that sense, we are communicating from a place of understanding, from a place of the depth of revelation of the world in us, the depth of our consecration to Him in how we live in the life that gives no room for the world to rule our thought pattern. 
So we can say to people, follow us as we follow Yeshua. Like Paul said, it's not just Paul. Every leader should be able to tell the people, it will make what I do as a, as a great Yeshua. Just watch out. You're going to grow in grace. And so on that note, yesterday we came to the attitude, the right attitude to the world and the ministry of the world. And we looked at seven things the world does in life. Because people wonder why so much scripture. I remember we once had an editor who was to edit our manuscript. And the editor was so fear. Why all these quotations? Why all these quotations with you instinctively? This is not the person for this job. Because there's no reason we should be angry. Everything we say must be based on the word. It must be also on all fours with the word. And anybody who is offended means that that person is not actively involved in the kingdom. Because what matters in the kingdom is the word of the Lord, not the word of the pastor, not the word of the overseer or visionary. It is the word of the Lord. And we must come to a place where everything we think, say, and do is based on the word. So we looked at seven of them. Today, we're going to look at another set of uh, 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 ministry of the world. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to come before you this morning to receive what you are giving to us. Have your way by your spirit. Minister life to us. Grant us the open heart to receive your word. Let your word transform us and let your word go before us. Let your word go with us. Thank you for answering the prayer in Yeshua Jesus' name. Amen, amen. So, the right attitude to and the ministry of the world, part two, number one, today, in lesson orientation, not 22, the world is like fire which consumes things that are contrary to the divine plan, whether the things are in our mind or in our thoughts, whether the things are in what we do, attitude of life, if we are open to the ministry of the world, the fire of the world will consume anything that is combustible because there are many things that Christians do that are combustible because they are not of the substance of the mixed eternity. And we're told in Jeremiah 23 29, it's not my word like a fire, says the Lord. That's 29, 23, 29, 8. It's not my word like a fire. So the world is like a fire. If you are open, the world can show you things that are not of him in you. If it's not happened to you, it's happened to me several times. Several times. For the 36 years of the work with the Lord, I can see the fire of the Lord chucking out, burning off things and bringing forth gold in certain areas. I say, well, they join. You are not yet there. But you know what? I can say you for sure the world. It's like a fire. If it's not, you've not experienced what of the fire, I can tell you it surely works like a fire. Number two, the world is like a hammer which breaks off things that are not seen in the lives and mindsets of the saints. And that's St. Jeremiah 23 to 9b, he says, where he says, not my word as a fire, says the Lord, he says, I'm like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. The word of the Lord is like a hammer. There are times we have strong bones in our mind from our culture, from our pattern of life, from habits we acquired when we are young, from families we are born. We are, you know, we are born into various types of dysfunction, cultural dysfunction, religious dysfunction. Now, the word of the Lord, when it comes, it comes to knock them or break them off. You know what Hammer does? You are hitting something, hitting something. It seems to resist. It seems to resist. After some time, it is dislodged. The more like a hammer, this Lord is throwing holes, mindset, pattern of thinking that is not of Him. Because the Lord is looking at the perfection we will attain in our lives through the world. Number three, the world is a potent instrument of spiritual warfare. Men and brethren, people do not know this. But let's take the example of Yeshua in Matthew chapter 4. What happened? Three times Satan tempted Yeshua with things. Seduction, temptation. Three times Yeshua answered, it is routine. 
Again, it is written. Again, it is written. You know the story. Matthew 4 and verse 1 to 11. And so it is so important to know that there are times when the enemy comes with suggestions, with ideas. Oh, that person doesn't like you. Oh, that kind of thing. What do you do? If you keep quiet, that thing settles in you. It becomes something, your reality. A lie of the enemy can become your reality. Learn to shut down the voice of the enemy. Learn to shut down the voice of game slayers. There are people who are who are gossips who try to break relationship between brethren. When they come to you, don't give fear. Even when they open their mouth and speak, shut it down immediately. Can you ask them, would you mind let me call uh, uh, this brother you're talking about so that we can talk about this thing? If you say, no, 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 I don't want to, I don't want trouble now. You know that person is a gossip. Because if a Christian indeed comes to you concerning that person, he should come with a mindset for you to be an instrument of reconciliation. If it's just to dump on you a lie about that person, that person is more dangerous than you know any demon you can think of. And there are so many of them in the house of the Lord. So Yeshua said to him, It is written. Fast four, when the temple with bread. If you are son of God, turn this bread, uh, turn this stone to bread. He said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the him. Then he took him to the temple, pinnacle of the temple. If you are son of God, cast yourself down. It is written, it shall be the devil put in the word. Not every time people quote the word means that the Lord is with them. So be careful to discern when people are speaking what is the intent, what is the motive, what is the outcome they desire. And so Yeshua also told him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tell the Lord thy Elohim. And not many people came to him. Somebody is inviting you to a weekend out of town of your own other gender. It's not your husband, it's not your wife. You know what? By entertaining that thought and discussing what you're going to do, already you are putting yourself in a situation of trying to tell the Lord. To deliver you from something, a trap you are building for yourself. You say, want the Lord to deliver you. As oh Lord, if it's not of you, don't let him call me again. No, you've already got him substantially there. Men and brethren, Satan tried again. And Yeshua told to him, he showed him a mountain, he took him to a mountain, he showed him all the glories of the world, so he still, hey, all these things I'll give unto you that will fall and worship you. Yeshua said to him, they will be behind you, Satan, for it is written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy Elohim, and him only shall thou serve. The devil left him. He shut down the enemy. That was spiritual war. If you don't know, Satan was warring against Yeshua with the mindset, with the thoughts he was showing to that he was shut down. And that's why in the book of the Christians, the Lord said to I hold, in verse 10, and in my brethren, be strong with the Lord and the power of his mind. They say, put on the whole armor of Elohim. You may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The devil has wiles. He has devices. They are just tricks to make you miss destiny. Either to miss the connection with your destiny helper or to miss the direction the Lord wants you to go. He can tempt you with something that looks so plausible. And the Lord says, you know what's like this flesh and blood? That this was not a big force, and this was not a big of this world, and this was not a big force in high places. Then he said, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you will be able to stand in the evil day, where having done all to stand. There's an evil day when you are vulnerable. There's an evil day when things can just come on stock in your life. There's an evil day if you're not fully armed with the whole armor of everything before that day. The chink is in your armor. But look at what he said in verse 14. Stand therefore. The very first equipment. Stand therefore, having your loins cut about with truth. The word. Truth. Truth is like a belt that holds together your upper garments and your lower garments. The one is not naked. A lot of people are walking naked. Open for Satan's manipulation. Because the world does not undergird their lives, does not hold together their lives. What are some sisters? So you say, verse 14, your law is got about with truth. When you are rooted in truth, nothing can shake you. Lies cannot shake you. Gossip cannot shake you. When you are rooted in truth, Satan cannot have you for lunch. 
Then he gave the order in which place again. Then he came again to verse 17 and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of the living. Sword is for both offensive and defensive. In the Roman army, you know, you could infantry, they fought with swords. You trust that the people and they trust that you use sword to shield yourself. So twice in the week, in the equipment for spiritual armor, you mention one truth as a belt to hold you together, your whole armor, and the sword for offensive and defensive warfare. That tells you how powerful the war is. You know what? The Satan so throws a vision at you. Learn to speak out in your home. By this of your own home, people do warfare only when they are together. That's how you listen. That's how religion works. Religion is what you do inside a building on certain holidays, you know, in certain circumstances. Learn to war. Even in your kitchen, that thought that came in, that negative thought, that if you allow it, it will destroy you. Learn to war against it right there. Number four, the world is the assured provisions of enemy to be fire. Everything we need is in the world. And if you know the world, you know what the Lord has already provided for you. And Satan is an expert in trying to tempt you with what you already have. That's what he did to Eve or the Garden of Eden. Try to tempt her with what she was already. She and he, Adam, her husband, were already gods over the earth way. They were the superintendents. They were charged to take care of the whole world. And then Satan was saying to them, God knows in the day you eat, your, your eyes be open, you know good and bad, and you'll be able to say, God is jealous of you. Oh, men and brethren, listen to me. It's important to know that the world has everything you need. You know what Yeshua said in Matthew 4, 4, we read before, when he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the world. Whatever the Lord has spoken, Stand upon it, depend upon it, it's going to bring about your blessings. And brothers and sisters, if you're a man or woman of the world, you can never be bereft of what is good because you can call forth by the creative power of Elohim, you can release the world into your circumstances and situation. That's why Joshua 1 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. They shall meditate there in day and night. And thou shalt be that thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shall thou make thy way prosperous, and there shall thou have good success. And so one also said, Blessed the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. Nor sit at the visit of his comfort, that is, the light is in the law of the Lord, and in his law that he may be good day and night. What will be the outcome? That's the And he shall be like a tree, not there by the rivers of water, that bring that forth his food in his season. His leaf also shall not be there, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So, depending upon the word, will lead you to receive all the Lord has ordained for you. Because in each season you can call for what is most appropriate, what is most needed. Number five, abiding in the Lord and giving his work space to abide in us is the key to productivity in the kingdom. Productivity is not just gather people or do this or that. Productivity is the whole purpose with the Lord called. You say, you have not called me, I have called you, and I gave you that you should go and bring for food and the food should remain. Brothers and sisters, John 15 says in verse 4, and I believe, and I knew, as a branch cannot be a fruit of his self except you abide in the vine, no more can be except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abided in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, but without me you can do nothing. If a man bide not in me, is cast out as a branch, and his weak, the other men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are born. And they are born. But seven, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, it shall be done unto you. So there's a connection between the word and answers to prayer. The reason why many people pray prayers that are really the soul that doesn't produce food is that they are absent outside of it will of the Father, outside of his timing. So there's a connection between prayer and the word. If the word is in us, reaching all wisdom, we know what to ask, when to ask. And it is the Father's good pleasure is glorified, and we be more free. 
Number six, the word renews the mind to transform it, to conform to the mind of Yeshua Jesus. We are told in Romans 12, verse 2, be not, this is for the kingdom citizen, be not conformed to this world. Don't be sold out to the fashion of the world. The world is soon a fashion dress that is like this, that is ungodly, and just food. No, no. Be not conformed to this world, or the way they think, or the things they hold there. They be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You see, the mind is everything. As a man to get in his eyes, so to say, if you still have your culture, your mindset of your people, the mindset of the people, of the land where you are, you will just be professing the kingdom. You can't practice the kingdom. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of Elohim. The good, acceptable, and perfect will of Elohim come from the renewed mind. Ephesians 4 23 says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Why is this so? Philippians 2 says in verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of Elohim, touching all of the people with Elohim, and made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of the servant, was made in likeness of men, made found in fact as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Brothers and sisters, when the mind is renewed with the world, it enables us to be able to abase that Yeshua may abound in us. And then Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, Think on these things, think on them. So the framework of what we should think on is all clearly provided in the world. If things are not true, drop them. Things are not honest, even if they are true. They are not honest, drop them. If, if they are not just balanced, equitable, drop them. If they are not pure, that thought you know you are dwelling on. If it's impure, drop it. If it's not lovely, drop it. If it's not a good report, drop it. If we can adopt this and discipline ourselves, there are many things that we trouble we get into, we will never get into them if we have a renewed mind, because the renewed mind transforms the way we look at things. Number seven, the Holy Spirit is promised to and works best in the lives of those that are written in the Bible to the world. You see, there is a terrible thing Satan has done to the Christian church. People now seek Holy Spirit, not for the purpose of the Father. They seek to use Him, and they seek to use His gift to promote themselves, exalt themselves, and gather crowd unto themselves, and nail people from money, and subdue them. No! Holy Spirit is given to exalt Yeshua HaMashiach, not a man, not a denomination, not a church. It's Yeshua. And the Lord said in John 14, 15, If you love me, keep my commandments, so be my word. And I will pray the Father, He shall give you another comforter that He may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because He seeth Him not, neither knoweth Him, when you know Him, He will dwell with you, and shall be with you, and will not leave you comfortless and continue. Brothers and sisters, those who live in obedience, the Lord Jesus the Holy Spirit, on the fourth day, Yeshua spoke to about 500 people. The day He was ascending to heaven, if you look at uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 6. He spoke to five hundred people. He told them, don't go anywhere. Wait for the promise of the Father. You know what happened? They who are 80 went their way to preach a half gospel. You see evidence of that in uh, Acts 18, Apollos, and Acts 19. They went to preach a half gospel. But the 120 that obeyed, what happened to them? And in Acts chapter 2, Holy Spirit came upon them, all of them, male, female, young, old, men, you know, all kinds of people, rich and poor, every one of them received. So Holy Spirit is for those who obey the Lord, those who are living by the Word. They will use Holy Spirit for the purpose of the Master, for the purpose of the Kingdom, not for their own aggrandizement. You don't know, project yourself is Yeshua. And any time you stop projecting Yeshua and the kingdom, you are in trouble. Even though you are doing the gospel, you may have a crowd around you. You know what? 
if he's not empowering people, um, teach, train, equip, activate, release. If they are not doing it with that kind of framework, the danger is that you will be tempted to exalt yourself and become a Lord, not an example to the flock, and that that point is a problem. Let's look at the last one, number eight. The world is appointed instrument of preparing the church for return of Yeshua Jesus. We are having all kinds of church growth today. A lot of church growth is based on charisma of a man or woman, or oh, the fame of a man or woman, popularity of a man or woman, and people flock there. Or miracles. People are getting that miracle. People get there because they are looking for that miracle. They are not looking for Yeshua. But you know what? For the kingdom church, the Lord says, I'm going to prepare you for the return of Yeshua. And he's not going to prepare with prophecy or with that, that, that apostolic power or that, that, that. All those things we grow in, he's going to use the word to prepare the church. Ephesians 5.25, husband love your wives, even as Yeshua also love the church and gave himself for it. That's what he said, that he might sanctify and cleanse it, the church will be sanctified and cleansed with the washing of water by the Word. The Word. The Lord will use the Word to dislodge things. You know, when you have a bath or when you, when you wash a plate, you see a plate greasy and full of oil and all that, they take soap and then put the water in ladders and it takes off all that at the end after three, four, five minutes, the plate is pan clean. That's what the Lord is doing to his church with his word, including the master class, to prepare people whose hearts are in him, that they might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. It should be glory, it should be holy and without blemish. Spots of sin, wrinkles of tradition, other such things, spiritual division and divisiveness, all those things can be taken away. You know what? There are people the Lord is waiting to do a work in them. They are held by the culture of their people. They are held by their tradition of their people. They are held by so many things that are contrary to the world. The Lord says He has appointed the holy world to do a work in those who receive it, and that work will prepare the church to be ready for that day of days that is coming soon. That day when the trumpet will sound in a split moment, the very Yeshua rise up. And they go up. Those who are alive or remain, they are changed in the moment of time. They go up and they meet with him. They go for the judgment seat of Yeshua. They experience the glories of heaven for a season. And they have the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then they return with Yeshua. They are on earth. On earth. Because of their falling away. The larger wing of the church that is not renewed in the mind. That is not purified by the world will be doing politics and all that, and the church will participate in embracing the Antichrist and embracing him more so when he makes the covenant of peace with Israel. Because Israel will come to a place where it absolutely depends on something outside him for a sustenance, for survival. And that thing is the very thing that will be to the Antichrist. But the man who will guarantee Israel peace, Israel will yearn for. Israel is not prepared to receive Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah. Israel is prepared to receive is the Antichrist. The Antichrist is what Israel is preparing to receive. Yeshua said in the book of John, I tell you no father's name, you rejected me. Somebody is coming in his name, you receive him. And so the Antichrist will go into the temple amid the abomination of desolation, Israel, and say, I am God. I am your God. This will say, no way. Yes, you have us, but you have mere man. He said, no, I am God. Israel will rebel. And he will seek to annihilate Israel. He will seek to annihilate Jews. Worse than the program of Adolf Hitler. Yeshua himself said it in Matthew 24, that such will be great tribulation, such as has never been since the war began. And seems to be terrible. And then, the Antichrist will turn from Israel, come against the church. The very church that brought him to power, because according to the book of Revelation 17, it's the Antichrist and the system that will destroy the Christian church. The Christian church that has not made Yeshua his head and Lord. Brothers and sisters, the 2024 Masterclass is going to be pointed for perfection 
to release the work of the Lord, the Lord says he will do it. And those who are open and ready, and those who embrace his truth, the Lord will do something unique. Something unique that will not just empower you to save yourself, but all those who hear you, all those who in your room of influence, relatives, friends, on social media, everywhere, the Lord will through you bring them to the place of security in the Lord. We're going to pray right now. And tomorrow, at the grace of the Lord, Pastor Grace will take on and do to you Sunday morning. Trust that we love you. And we're doing this because of that love as instruments of bringing for these things. It's not only of the arrangement all over the world. There are people the Lord is using to prepare people of them. And we're saying to you, if by His grace He has connected us together, please receive this thing. Leave them out. We ask that we do for the King and His kingdom, preparing the way for His return, and starting with ourselves. So, tomorrow, we continue to share this video, encourage other people to get to know these truths about the power of the world. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to share your word with your sins. Even now we say, Lord, have your way. And let the word that has gone forth bear fruit, 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold, to your own praise and glory. We we'll bless you for us in our prayer. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching and we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook Monday all the way to Sunday every day by about 10.30 a.m. UK time and that's the same at Nigerian time and you, it's either Apostle George Monday to Friday uh, to Thursday, Pastor Grace uh, Friday to Sunday and then in the evening of Sunday we have two sessions from 5.30 to about 6 after 6 another one up to 7 so please join us on the live stream and you're gonna enjoy it we also visit our website www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks this course you just listened to all these lessons you know there's an ebook we have free of charge everything we do is free but more importantly you can actually do your program on you know ebooks you can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class you can go to www.kingdomboostclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it you can also subscribe to our channels this youtube gsom.tv and we also have a telegram channel gsom media you can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua Jesus is empowered with truth remember it is the teach train equip activate and release paradigm absolutely free of charge have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon